All right, guys, thank you for joining us for another episode of Three Comic Money. Uh, this this week on comicbookinvest.com, we get to have David Nak Nakayama. Uh, did I say it right? David, did yeah, I say Nakayama, your name? Nakayama, right? you got it. Nakayama. Yeah. David oh. Nakayama here joining us, and we're going to talk. And he's he's chosen a great category. Uh, David, the way this runs, Pete's going to throw up this card, three cards. You choose the left, right, or middle card, and that's going to decide who goes first. And mm, Okay. Uh, and so it just sort of as we do a round robin thing, and we'll sort of talk about the cards and go through there. So, all right, yeah. Pete, throw that up for us. Sounds good. Yeah, hold on. I got to. I switched decks on him here. He wasn't quite ready for me. Fancy audio visual <laughs> aids here. Oh, okay. yeah. Here we go. All right. So it's like three, three, three card money. Think of it that way. So the, a picture is hidden behind oh, one of these. Oh, there you go. Find where the card is. Or the card. Where's the queen? Where's the awesome. queen? I love it. Let's go middle. All right. He's picked middle. All right, Mike. Right. No, he's going to be left. All right, so let's see what we got here. It's in the middle. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, David, uh, pin up, you gave us a couple different options, and we chose pinups. Can you talk about pinups? Just why, in general, did you choose pinups, or you think that's a good category or thing to talk about? I, you know, I... A lot of my artistic heroes, like guys like Adam Hughes or Jim Lee or J. Scott Campbell, uh, they're in the DNA of how I even work. Um, they're known for drawing beautiful superwomen. And I think part of what attracted me to their work in the first place is, like, I thought that was an amazing magic trick. You know, <laughs> like, how do they do that? I want to learn how to do that. And so part of the way that I approach comic art in general is you know, in a similar way. So I, I still like doing pinup covers for Zenoscope, you know, just straight up pinup stuff. And when I draw, you know, superheroines in any context, I'm definitely thinking about, you know, how my idols would have approached it or, you know, going back to Gil Elvgren or, you know, uh, you know anyone uh, in the history of art who's, who's done that well, I'm, I'm thinking about that. So even in my latest covers like that Magic Strange Academy or or punch uh, punchline for for the DC uh, exclusive we did recently. I'm thinking that way, uh, so it's always uh, always high in my mind. I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, so this time you sent us a category, but the three of us actually went through your your pinup books and we picked what we thought of as our favorite pinup. So the first one gets to Great. come up, and we'll talk about why we chose it, but then also tell us what went into the the theory about why you did that pinup um, that good. particular cover. All right, so. so First one we have is your pick, Chris. So this All is right. what you picked out of his. So eventually it's going to come up on the screen. It's a blank it. cover. I'm a big fan of the blank sketch cover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so because you, you can do whatever you want. So I actually cheated a little bit. This is not necessarily a pinup cover, but uh, we talked about this Ultimates run. I have the book here behind me. Uh, I, lo I loved all the different covers. You, you said earlier that the Ultimates run – you don't, the cloak and daggers always mentioned. This is the one I see people grabbing though, as well. Um, they, oh, it's good. just such, awesome. It's, it's such a great cover. I, it's one that I don't know why it hasn't gone to $15, $20, $50 range. Like it's just it's a great, great cover where you get to see dagger and bombshell and kitty pride. And I can't remember the other girl. Uh, but I was, I'm pretty impressed. I remembered all at least three out of the four. Um, <laughs> that's great. But, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, Spider Woman, aka Black oh, Widow. Yeah. Jessica uh, Drew, but, or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, uh, uh, you reminded me that I, I ought to repost this one. I haven't posted this one probably since <laughs> it came out, but I, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised how well it seems to hold up. So, yeah, good idea. I'll definitely have to show this one off again. Um, yeah, there gorgeous. are definitely. Go ahead. Oh, I just said it's gorgeous. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, there's a slight delay. I can't quite hear sometimes, but um, uh, yeah, like he was saying. This whole run was really experimental, and on this one, I mean, I don't think I've seen any covers like this before. You know, like <laughs> the, the beach, the beach party, or the beach layout, or whatever this, whatever you want to call this, it's pretty unique. I've never done a cover like that. It's very rare at Marvel, so I don't know. I like the creativity of it and the bright popping colors. It's a fun cover, even to this day. I think. Oh, it is. I mean. And especially, I don't know. I know artists. You don't. You don't necessarily pay attention to the spec game or speculation of these. The MCU is this covers becoming hot, and this 
Well, in this, you have characters that are slowly becoming more interesting for collectors. They're going, wait, Jessica Drew, Spider Woman's on here, Kitty Pride, Bombshell. There's a, there's an interest in her now. All of a sudden, and people forget that you did this run of all these great covers through this. This one, of course, has sexy women all over the cover. Um, it's a great little run. Um, it, I, I love this. I love this run. This is one of my favorite little runs, uh, the covers and also just the stories, just fun. But uh, I just think it's interesting, like thinking through you were able to throw four women on the cover. They're not overly sexualized, but they're still sexy. I mean, like, I, I, it's just like, this is what a beach party is for. These are mid twenties, maybe early teen women just hanging out at the beach. Cause you know, the story has miles in it. It has, uh, whatever all other guys. He meant late teen. Yeah, he late, meant late, late, late teen. teen. <laughs> late teen. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, I think it's a great cover. I'm just uh, trying to help you out, Chris. I don't want yes. anyone to, you know. <laughs> uh, yes, please do. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, th I think the vibe on this book was, you know, it, it was called the Ultimates, but it could have been called Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. It was kind of like the, you know, the Miles Miles Morales team book, and it was Miles as Spider-Man with all of these other young heroes around him. It, you know, it's similar to the the Champions concept that they have going on right now, but. Every cover in the series was really different. Um, you know, we did a where just Waldo one at the end. Even um, there's there's a you know a, a group shot where angel. all the characters, yeah, the all the all silhouette cover, um, yeah. which shockingly to me they used as the uh, volume two. Yeah. Uh, Trade paperback cover. <laughs> All right, so you next know, up we got um, Pete, and he's going to share his book what he when he talks about pinups and who, who he thinks of. All right, well, pinups was uh, a hard category just to nail down to only three. Uh, you can see behind my head, I threw up a lot of books that I wanted to include but didn't pick. So uh, I don't know if it was during our pre-show or if it was actually during our show, David, when you mentioned Jason Scott Campbell being you know, an influence, but I decided to go with a Campbell pick. So I Yay. went with the uh, Black Widow, uh, you know, six. Mostly because I somehow luckily found two of these within the last couple of months. I hate you. Looking for this for yeah. ages. So I, I love this cover. I was debating between this or one of the Mary Janes, but I decided to go with this one as a yeah, nice little pinup cover. Been looking for that book for ten years. You found two in a month. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get rid of one. You'll be the first person I let know. <laughs> Woohoo! But not not dollar bin prices though. <laughs> no, nor and nor should it be. Nor should it be. He needs to make his money. That's that's important. I paid a dollar for one, and I paid six dollars for the second. I'd rather not pay top dollar for it if we can help it, but I'm happy to pay a fair price. Uh, <laughs> David, thinking about the what they just talked about, do you ever pay attention to like, man, your cover? This cover is shot up, and uh, like people go crazy. Like uh, I think one that Pete and I were talking about earlier. And we have in a deck mm -hmm. the tarot that you did with the Scarlet Hoden. That book that was cover. ballistic. I yeah, mean, did that, you were you aware of that when it was going on? I, I was. Yeah, they. Uh, you know, I I get tapped to do a lot of ratio variants for some reason. I don't know why that is, but it, <laughs> but it happens. And uh, that one was an extremely rare one, and I think it was also like one of my better covers that year. You know, Gorgeous. so like the yeah, thank you. you the, the confluence of the, the, you know, it being one of the better covers I think I've ever done, plus it being super rare, and I think it being on a book that was possibly underordered meant that there was an insane scarcity uh, of that book. Um, so it, it popped to like $200 like right away, mm -hmm. and people were telling me about it because it was like, it, it was on people's radar. So they were, mm -hmm. they were letting me know, and, and so for that reason, I did know about it. Um, Otherwise, I'm not really, I don't really track prices too much. Um, I'm <laughs> pretty busy <laughs> with the yeah. actual making part. So, <laughs> so I don't do that. Makes but, sense. Uh, I, I do notice, you know, when I go to conventions that people will come with, you know, certain books, you know, we'll, I'll see them over and over again and they're not easy to get. So like the, you know, the apocalypse and the extracts, uh, number one with, uh, there's a character most people don't know called Unveil. She's sort of a rainbow, mm -hmm. rainbow looking mm. uh, X-Men character. That one popped. Um, there's there's a Gwenpool Mary Jane, uh, unbelievable oh, Gwenpool yeah. issue. Kind of selfie thing. People brought a lot. Mm -hmm. That one. 
um, some of the Spider-Man uh, PS4 covers, but yeah, like, you know, there are certain ones that I know are really working for people. Oh, and breaking news, I just found out like five minutes before this call that our brand new um, Strange Academy number four with Magic on the mm -hmm. cover, Magic as a teacher, that sold out. So I guess, uh, yeah, <sighs> they just told me that's really great. <laughs> yeah, that's good yeah, at least the Virgin variant uh, sold out. So the regular ones nice. are still there, but... Um, that's always uh, good to hear. I was dragging again. my heels. I thought I would be able to get one, but nevertheless, not. Um. <laughs> I didn't get one either. Damn it! <laughs> well, they, they told me to to let people know that co Comic Traders LA and Street Level Hero wait Comic Traders CA and Street Level Hero LA their partner sites still have a few, but Unknown okay. Comets itself is sold out of the Virgin. So, okay, pretty cool. Right. I'm glad. So yeah. Mike's right now pulling up on his computer. No. <laughs> but no, there's another cover I want instead, and it's the one that I chose to put in the deck tonight. Is I got to find out what what issue that's on because I need it. Oh, well, <laughs> we the need one, it. I, the one I found or one I chose, I found it, but it's quite pricey these days. I'm I don't care what it costs. I'm pissed that I don't own it already. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw it on I saw it on that on that list that we had, and I'm like, how do I not own that book? <laughs> yeah, I like your your pick too. We're we'll getting see. ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we, are, we are. Sorry, Mike. I'm excited about it. I want it. Mike, okay. what's your first book? Okay, so my first book is is sort of a um uh it's kind of a sleeper, I guess. It's a it's a dollar book. It's Torchy. Uh, it is an Olivia de Berardinus. Uh, like it's really hard. It's so so much white on it. Um, Don't worry, I'll put a good image in. Very, very pinup. I mean, it is like, I mean, this is obviously what Olivia was known for. Uh, and the stuff that that we see is normally like car, card sets and posters and prints. And there's not a whole lot of comics with Olivia art on it. But there's a, the, the first two of these and the last one are all done by Debar Adinas. And I love this one. This is, this is one that um, doesn't pop up real often, but when it does, it's pretty cheap. Um, it's just... Gorgeous, classic, like Varga style pinup, um, you know, kind of timeless. There's a little bit of an 80s, 90s flair to it, but for the most part, it's just, I mean, it's just gorgeous, simple stuff. I love it. Yeah, um, it's awesome. And it's it's like a $5 book, you know, it, you have, but it doesn't pop up in bins very often. So I was really excited to find one. I saw on Instagram maybe last week that she is doing a Harley Quinn uh, oh. retailer variant. Uh, That's she posted the art, art already. It looks beautiful as usual, um, but it seems like she may be getting back into some of these retailer variant type covers. So we can look forward to that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Pretty yeah, cool. no, Mike, that might not be awesome because that means you you can't pay for daycare. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have money set aside for daycare. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so David, what I do is I, I I sell bunches of comic books. I invest some back in to the hobby, and then I set aside like two thirds of it for my baby. I have a one and a half year old as does Chris. Uh, and we're, we're, we're trying to frantically figure out how we're going to pay for daycare. <laughs> so, that's good. That's uh, good thinking. Yeah. But comics, <laughs> comics does definitely helped. I definitely, I have a year saved of daycare ready to go. So, awesome. <laughs> so I've got a little set aside to invest in comic books. <laughs> I'm so, glad that business is paying off for you. Fantastic. It is. It is. Uh, now, and I always go off off the rails a little bit when it would pin up my I Googled pinups because like, okay, what, what what necessarily could pinups mean? I mean, I thought immediately of those calendars and I was like, well, no, no, he's not. He doesn't mean that. And then I went to your website. I was like, oh, he does mean those. Um, <laughs> but, but I still found other pinups. And what I started thinking of was in the 80s, uh, all the Marvel books seemed like at the back of the book, they had like because uh, we talk about we we're talking about exclusive covers and all these variant covers now. They didn't do that in the 80s. The The copyright, you had one cover, one book. But they also had things like Marvel Fanfare and Marvel Age where you'd flip to the back and you'd find pinups mm -hmm. that you could print off and you could do – or not print off, you just cut them out because you weren't – I mean, who really cares about Marvel Fanfare? Well, oh, that's the actual book. But there's like four pages of these uh, different ones. And, I mean, whether or not these are the ones, then usually the back cover was another one. Mm. Uh, this is uh, – Sink of it, Bill Sink and uh, Hunt. I don't know who the Hunt is. Uh, Judith Hunt is the penciler, and then Sink is the inker on that. Oh. But uh, it's sorry, I always Mike and I both have a little uh, affection for Sink. Uh, he his is a little more crazy than mine, but 
A little, <laughs> a little, a little. But I mean, I, I picked this up for the cover when I. But the inside, I love all these uh, pinups and Marvel Age. I have a few. I couldn't find the one I wanted. I have one. Uh, it's a Marvel Age. I think it's one of uh, Mark Bagley's like first time drawing Spider Man. It's like issue awesome. like fifty or fifty one, and it's a pinup that he did or whatever. And I think it was like some Marvel Age contest that you know you you enter your stuff and you do and like some of that type of stuff is just sort of cool. And I love th when I thought of pinups, I was like, oh yeah, those are, that's what I did. I love pulling those out because I I mean I was I was an art teacher or whatever, and I wanted to be an art a comic book. And I mean just, we talked about Jim Lee earlier, like pulling out the rogue and drawing rogue as many times as possible. And of course, Wolverine as many times as possible that the way Jim Lee did, but you would also look for those splash pages and those uh, in back of the book type things. But when I think about it, this is where exclusive covers eventually came from, like thinking back to that's how you as an artist got to do, I don't know, back when you first got started, did you have some of that type of stuff in the back of books where you had your, Oh, I got to play around and throw in an extra cover in the back. Um, you mean as a collector? Yes. yes. Um, when I first started reading them, um, you know, you had uh, these, there was, there was a, a trend at the time where they would have interconnecting stories between different annuals, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like four, uh, four part stories would, would cross over four completely different books, annuals, and they would often use some of the pages to do, you know, like four or five uh, pinup shots the way you're talking about. And it, you know, there was there, one of Jim Lee's best rogue pieces uh, ended up printing that way. But uh, you know, the, you saw it a lot in annuals when I was reading, in particular. Yeah. And more recently, it's it's like it's really rare. They rarely do that these days. The the closest I think I've seen is every once in a while you'll get a writer like Brian Bendis will do like a book where it has a different artist on every page. And uh, was that, those did you do one of those pages in Legion? The... Uh, no, no. I've, I've okay. never drawn uh, directly for DC. I've done some retailer variants, and I've I've worked for Warner Brothers on some movie stuff, but not uh, directly for DC Comics. So maybe someday. Okay. <laughs> but um, and I'd certainly love to do one of those, you know, uh, one page deals. Those are super fun. But um, yeah, it reminds me of that. It's the spirit of you know mm -hmm. bringing in all these different cool artists to do their rendition. It just happens to be worked into the story. So I like the way that they sort of snuck the, the spirit of pinup back into, into the regular book sometimes. Oh, it's I, it, some of those books that you mentioned are just, I love it. Like sometimes I might not like this page, but then I flip to the next page. I'm like, Oh, I love this artist. And it's, and it's also a great way to expose you to other artists that you might not normally pick up. Like I, I've, I've learned to like some artists that I normally would never have liked hmm. if I hadn't picked up one of those books that has, Differing pages or whatever. Um, yeah. So, oh yeah, the sound uh, back in the Marvel, the D, uh, those type of books. I do say one place though. I do see it now is in the trades. Like they'll take a trade paperback, like you talked about the Ultimates, and then you open up to the back and you see every cover that was ever printed yeah. for that that book, and it's it's beautiful. Um, Mike's pride and glory in his his bedroom is uh, he can tell you about it. it is one that actually made the back <laughs> of one of the trade paperbacks. Yeah, whoa! Uh, it was, right. it, it, it's Sinkevich actually, and Chris was being nice before. Sink is literally like my man crush in the art world. Uh, <laughs> it's it's bad. It's there's like there's I have a real problem. But I, I acquired a painting. <laughs> I acquired a New Mutants Karma painting that had never been used as a cover, and a local shop of mine wanted to use it for New Mutants Dead Souls, and uh, they did a, a shop variant, a store variant for it, and used no, my no. painting for it which was awesome enough as it was. And yeah. then Marvel decided when they did the trade, which they never put store variants in those, they printed it in the trade paperback. So, so cool. I probably because it's Sienkiewicz with New Mutants, they figured we have to put that in yeah. there. So yeah. yeah, that's kind of, that's that's my, my pride and joy is the fact that that's in the main trade paperback now. So that's very, awesome. very cool. Super yeah. cool. Yeah, I was really excited about that. I mean, I'm excited to own the painting regardless of where it got printed. But, um, but yeah, and I had a nice conversation with with Bill about why it was done, and it was it was this test thing. It was like plastic coated paper, and he wanted to figure out how his painting style would react to the plastic coating on the paper, and it never got used as a cover. It just kind of got lost in the shuffle and sold, and then I bought it. It was a long story, but um, but but either way, yeah, it got printed in the back. And, and Chris is right. I love I love trades for just that reason, especially when they're super rare variant covers that you don't get your hands on because they cost too much. That's often a really nice way to get your hands on that art. It might be the only way that you can afford to, to do it sometimes. 
But yeah. okay, so Mike, you brought up a great point. Now, David, this is a question for you though. Painting styles and different things. I know you said you've been learning and growing as an artist. How do you experiment? Like, what do you experiment? How, how do you do that? Like, <clears throat> um, well, you know, I uh, I went through twelve years in the video game industry and did some covers on the side. I never really left comics, but uh, when you're doing video games, every game, you know, they're not going to share the same style. It's sort of important that each game has its own, you know, identity. And so, if you're doing marketing art or you know, uh, stylistic pre-production like I was, you're, you're learning to draw on all these different styles. So I, I, I came out of video games knowing all these different styles. And, and then the question was, okay, well, if you have to think about yourself as a brand, you can't be all the different styles. You have to pick one. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to follow you from book to book. And that's, that's no good. So uh, at first, I, you know, I, I just kind of took my best shot. And I thought, well, this could be a cool style. I guess I'll do this. And then I got really experimental and tried all the different things. And then, you know, for a little while, I was trying to be all painted and no line. And I, I've sort of tried all the different things at this point. I've sort of uh, got to the point where, okay, I've, I've checked all these, I've tried everything. And, and now it's sort of the synthesis of everything that I like together in one style. I feel like I've finally come around and brought in all the things I like to do uh, in, in one style. And I, I definitely, Definitely don't want this to be the end of artistic growth. I'm sure it'll continue to change. But for now, I really like this vibe where you paint the hell out of the interiors. You know, uh, you know, there are no lines in the interiors. But yeah. elsewhere in the composition, maybe it's a big fat holding line or it's flat objects in the background or something like that. You have a graphic touch as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, the, the the combination of the two, the juxtaposition of, of the, you know, the fully round painted looks realistic with something that is obviously not realistic. Having those both in the same image is what I think of as my style now. So uh, can you give an example of a cover that like, epitomizes that for you that you just did or you've done recently? Um, I feel like they all do it to some extent, but I, I well, just, recently... just so we can throw up an image like this is what oh, David's sure. talking about. <laughs> well, the, the, the epitome of it is a thing that has yet to be released, but will probably be released in the next couple of days. Um, hey, we, we don't uh, we don't actually show it till Sunday, so you're good. <laughs> well, maybe maybe it'll come out. Well, stay tuned. Uh, I'll mention it just in case. There's a there's a book called Crossover that Donny Cates is doing. Oh, you get to do one of those. I did, yeah, and uh, it's for Outer Limits Borough, and I'm really proud of it, but it, it really typifies... <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's, that's 20 minutes down the road from me. <laughs> Is that right? Wow, yeah. okay, perfect. Well, shout out to those <laughs> guys. <laughs> Chris, you're there more often. Yeah, I, I go there more often. I'll pay you back. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, that's small in comics, but... Um, yeah, what I, what I, the reason I think it epitomizes what you're talking about is there's a big painted character in the center, and then the whole the whole the whole plot of the comic is about you know the real world crossing over with the fictional world, and so the way that the characters are done all around the character is very line art, traditional comics. I put the Ben Day dots in there, all of that, but then the character herself is very painted in my own usual style. So it's explicitly about matching the two styles together just like that book is about it it made the most sense for nice. for that book that's awesome Perfect. now you make me gotta go okay uh burrow put hook me up when you get this in yeah, <laughs> I'm, like i want to i want to see this cover uh no that's awesome it, that's so cool like they've just recently i guess in the past year gotten into doing a story exclusive so it's like whoa i'm actually talking to an artist that's going to be doing their that's just sort of cool yeah. to me uh they've had but, some really good ones lately too yeah they've 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 done and they i love how you the artists are now you guys are getting to be exclusive covers on like boom and image and these these books that no, don't necessarily a lot of times get variant covers but they get these mm -hmm. store exclusives and they for for a collector standpoint it's not three thousand you don't have to buy three thousand copies of it to get it done you can buy a thousand copies or five hundred copies yeah. but we also get to see art like I'm seeing artists that I'd never heard of before get put on these store exclusives and. For I mean, I'm assuming for you guys, it's just you get paid to do the art. It doesn't matter how many copies of the book are printed. So it feels like more stores are going, hey, right. and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's you get a percentage of the cut of the books. I don't know. I guess it depends. Uh, but I think uh, I think the deals are all over the map. But I think it's, as you yeah. say, most typically you, you get your page right. And that's that. And then the store you know, has, has, uh, will, has the risk reward, right? So if they, mm. if they do really well with it, then they're going to make all those sales. And 
either way, I don't know, I, however we want to do it, like I am going to promote all of these books, right? Like yeah. if someone is going to come to me and give me that honor of, uh, hey, we really love you. We really love your art. We want to have this be our representative out in the marketplace. Thank you. Yes, I would love to do that. And I'm going to advertise it for you as well on all of my channels <laughs> when it comes out, you know? Oh, no, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, but it also like, the more your name is out there, as you talked about branding, like, hey, if I'm advertising their store, then they might come back to me again. But you know what? The store down the road might come to me because I did a great cover for them. Um, and I mean, you I love your you played around with your styles. One one that you've done that I don't know how many different ones you've done. Those oats covers, the cereal boxes. <laughs> cereal boxes. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the cereal I just covers. Cracked, you want to talk oh. about cereal covers? <laughs> I didn't have to. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm uh, more just because I, I Limits Borough had some of them. They, I guess they they bought some off other stores that you did, and they'd have them up on the wall and everything. It cracks me up. Like I never seen it, but actually, Kari Andrews did one through that Hulk run. The Hulk pops was one that I remember. That's right. Then, Is that uh, right? I didn't know about that. I, I, actually, I, I have it in a stack right here in front of me. But okay. uh, you you become synonymous with it, I think, just because you've done what? How many of them now have you done? I think there's a good Five, eight of them at this point. Eight. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the the first one I remember was the symbiotes the with the venom uh, eating it and then I think you had like an absolute carnage version of it and yep, or yep. something. Symbiotes so. was the first one and it's really funny. Like I I spent two years at the Kubert School and we had this one assignment that was you know lots of fun assignments and and one of them was you know do a cereal box cover and I'm thinking well this is fun but I don't know if I'm ever going to use this in my professional life and then <laughs> flash forward like 25 years and it's like oh okay that's all I'm doing right now <laughs> it's a really worthy worthy project <laughs> <laughs> that's it sounds like uh one when I taught art it was one of those things you did the okay I want you to design your own shoe. Like, it sounds like that type of project. Hey, just to come up, design your own cereal box. And now you've become s not synonymous because your, your style's way past that cereal box stuff. But like when I first, like that was the first thing that popped into my mind when I started looking up your stuff. And I was like, wait, no, that stuff's not, it, this stuff is what I like. But that I do, that's the first thing I thought of was symbiotes. Just because I remember going, who's doing cereal box covers? Uh, but <laughs> so. I've been thinking a lot about style and covers recently and and I, I i do enough of them where i you know put them on instagram and i get data right away who's liking what and then i can speculate about why they like it but one thing that's really clear to me is that you know you, uh, there are lots of comics on the shelves where it's just you know this character is striking a cool pose and it's drawn very well and you know maybe they're fighting a villain or something like that we've seen that three billion times and mm -hmm. it's great and honestly like if my favorite artist draws that that's fine. I'm still going to buy it. But for me, what seems to work is when there's another layer on top of the drawing. Drawing's really important. It has to be a good drawing. But what I'm saying is if it has um, uh, like a, a gag on the cover, like a joke, mm -hmm. if it has sex appeal, if it has some kind of meta layer, if it has pop culture reference, uh, mm -hmm. if it has some kind of vis visual trick in it, like an Escher kind of thing, or all of those. Ooh, uh, thank you for saying that, sure. That just makes my heart happy. Uh, <laughs> so, I love me some MC. Fact, mental note variant series. Hmm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Especially the ones where uh, he's coming out of the cover and then back into the cover, and you can do something. Uh, right. Uh, that, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Someone should do that. The uh, anyway. The point is, I find that the you know the likes and the follows that that come from a, a cover like that, where there's more thinking to it. Uh, it's it's like orders of magnitude higher, you know. The, the yeah. People and, and and it makes sense, right? Like if people are amused by something, that's when they're going to want to tell their friends about it and say, "Hey, uh, did you see this thing? Like, look at look at what he did with the character here." And that, that's, well, that's I think what happens is it gets shareable uh, because of the thinking behind it. So I'm trying one, to do all one my thing covers that way these days. One thing that uh, when you're talking about all that, I think of you. The black cat strikes again. She's holding that little tum tum <laughs> or whatever in her hand. Yeah. That that that's another variant that blew up. But like yes. it, why? Why is that little tum tum in her hand? Like I don't haven't played the game. I don't know. Is there, that like her pet? Or that's why. Yeah. The the uh, <laughs> so in in the game when you first encounter Black Cat, there's a series of sort of fetch missions where you have to use your camera to see something really far away, and it's that little doll that she's okay. hidden in each of these places. So. Anybody that's played the game is immediately going to recognize that and it will give them 
uh, it, it lets them remember the good time that they had yeah. with that game. Uh, and plus, it's a sexy pinup cover, so you got that going for it. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think again, that's why you know that cover offers you more than just a, a drawing. It lets you remember that game as well. So okay. exactly what I'm talking about. Nice. All right. Well, we're going to go to your second book because I mean, Mike and Pete have told some great ones. So let's see which ones they chose. Oh, all right. Well, let me bring this up. Well, that was yours. So my, I believe my pick was next. And by scrolling through the site, I saw this. Uh, I think you, you mentioned this Wednesday, Adam. Oh, ah. I just thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was just Thanks. so cool. Like, I just, I dig it. But the only one I could find, like looking like out on eBay, because I think this is what maybe last year, like 2019. Yeah, it's yeah. close to two hundred bucks. I'm like, I don't have two hundred bucks right now, but it is gorgeous. Oh, Ooh. I just found mine. You. Oh, you found <laughs> you have nuts. Add to cart, buying now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Well, oh, hopefully so I excited. find mine. Done. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I Pete. Really, I didn't really mean to really sabotage. Excited. I just got so excited. I got nothing else because I don't I like have that this kind book. of interruption. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but Wednesday, um, the the thing I, I can share about this one is yeah, I, I've done for quite quite a while. I, like I said, I really do like you know the the art of pinup, and and I try to go back to it uh, from time to time. And Zenoscope is you know they're just the the coolest game in town when it comes to pinup. It's it's kind of their what they do. Yeah. Um, although I don't want to diminish, like the storytelling is really good. There's, there's a reason why, you know, they've been able to make TV shows out of their books. Like it's, it's, I don't want to discount the storytelling at all, but they are very good at the pinup covers as well. And so this was one. And what's cool to me about this one is like, I, I always try my best on all my covers, but on this one, it quickly became by far the most popular of all my pinup covers in history on art stage. So What's interesting to me about that is ArtStation is a social media for other artists. And I'm fascinated. I, I don't immediately understand, but I'm fascinated why this of all my pinup covers is the one that artists like the best. You know, it's, 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 it does what I was saying before. It exemplifies that sort of painted next to graphic. You know, you can't get much more graphic than solid black. Yes. And there's that, that very heavy white outline around white it. Outline. But it, Yep. But everything else is painted. And I think it might just be that super pop that happens, you know, like it, it it's hard to contrast much more black and then you know, the black to her skin is, is, is close to white. So, you know, black background, white character, really, you know, for maximum pop, you can't do much more than this. Maybe it's that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Well, Thanks, and it, I wonder if it's uh, that and JTC did this or John Tyler Christopher, like you guys and you have some covers, too, that you've mastered that entire just putting a solid color and then like you said you put the graphic in and that uh negative space and you've done a couple they're not yeah. sort of negative space and uh we'll, we'll yeah. get into that a little bit later with mike um but like these covers i love it i mean i love the black on black uh thing i think you have a spider-man uh one your ps4 cover i think did you do a cover for the game is are the the uh, red where he's flying through yes. the sky and his arms are back yes oh uh, yep that that's oh, a gorgeous that. The ones over your shoulder right now are some great examples of the oh, yeah. near negative space idea. Uh, I, you know, like it's on purpose that she's solid black and the background is solid black yeah, and no, she's red one. Yeah. with no rendering. Exactly. Yeah, you've got them all. Um, so I, I haven't gone as far as JTC as to let the, the line disappear and let the color mm -hmm. flow into the background. I find that that's challenging because it sometimes creates really weird shapes, you know, like yeah. if you're, if you're careful, it can be perfect, but sometimes the negative shapes are really odd. And so I always chicken out at the end and just put the holding line. <laughs> but like that, the white line makes that one. Like uh, if, I mean, it's a great picture, but that, you're right. That white line makes it pop out to where, yes. to a degree. And it's hard to, I mean, other than what I just said, I don't know if there's a way to describe it anymore. You've described it. And it's like, it's just the white line. It's something about it. I mean, so I don't think it would have yeah, been as good as a negative uh, space variant. Oh. It's sort of an overused trick where, uh, you know, like in every movie poster ever, they'll have a really hot um, rim light around the character. So there'll be mm -hmm. a shadow, but then there's a really bright light right behind them that, that pops the edge. 
It's almost mm-hmm. happening on me right now because of that white window. <laughs> it's like, right. how did you know right now? <laughs> I completely planned this because I was going to talk about See, it. See, it <laughs> minus the fat rolls. It creates this black line right underneath my neck where my <laughs> chin fat is. So um, <laughs> I just had mine with a beard. Oh, okay. So that's that's a better strategy. <laughs> but it, it's a, it's like it's used every every single movie poster because it looks good. People respond to it. It's it's really good on the contrast. It makes things look super round. And so I, I I've certainly been abusing it recently. And uh, at the moment, I'm in a back off and don't use that so much. Period. But I'll get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. That's a, and what what book was that on? You can, can, uh, it's a Wednesday, but like what was in a soap uh, book or was it ex- so, uh, con exclusive? It's so hard to remember that those yeah. were produced in, in very small numbers on, you know, like a, they're very exclusive collector items. They're often uh, sold at shows. Um, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of cases, it's like there are a hundred of them or like 350 oh, wow. or something. Yeah. That, that's just the, the business model that they're using. Um my latest one's going to be on one of the regular books, so I'm really excited about that. But Ooh, okay. uh, in that case, I think it was a very, very limited run of like sub 200. It could be 50 or less, for all I know, 50 or less. So, uh, Pete, you and... got until the show airs to get a copy yeah, because they're, they're gonna, and now that you've shown it, everyone's going to go chasing this book. So, it's like a $500 I, book yeah, at the end I of the show. I have right? the day <laughs> that be cool? on my own. And I just grabbed the only <laughs> copy on, the, on eBay of the one that I was looking for. So, so they're all gone. People are going to look on Sunday and they're not there. See, that, that's why I went for this one. You lose. See, exactly. I, I went for yeah, this you already though. have yours. You already have. See, you cheated. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, they, I, you know, it, it, that's kind of what's cool about them is you go to these shows and that's it. Like you're the only person that's going to to get that. There's a huge incentive to, to grab it while you can and uh you know that's 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 fun i don't i don't want all my books necessarily to be that hard for people to get there's a lot of value in having things be easy you know for people to get i i I want lots of people to know my stuff uh and not just cater to you know like uh, a few collectors here and there so you know i hope i'm getting the right mix where there's some for both of those markets i think there definitely is so yeah i got my backup for it i i got this i I like the gothic one leader i love the cover I, I love this Thank cover you so much. So I have this Thank one. You. So I like the other one, but I'll be happy with this one too. <laughs> That's a personal favorite of mine too, because I uh, I was a giant fan of Adam Warren. You know, uh, you know, as I was coming of age as a comic book artist, and he also happened to have gone to the Kubert School for a little while, like I did. So you would find no bigger fan of Adam Warren than me when Live Wires first came out yeah. at Marvel many years ago. And they, they've basically not done anything with the characters until that book. So, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's basically channeling 25 years of my fandom of, of Adam Warren and not wanting to let that guy down. You know, I just, I, I'm like, oh, dude, this is the first time his characters have appeared in a long time. I better not screw this up. So <laughs> I tried really hard to make that a real standout cover. And hey, did, didn't it, you write about a, them? Did I what? Uh, no, Peter, didn't you write an article about mm-hmm. Livewire for yeah, because, because of, of that, that book? Yeah, yeah, because of that book, it made me look back at the Adam Warren books to find out where did this character appear because I don't know who she is, but it's awesome. Yeah. So yes, they're they're really yeah. good. It's a it's a short mini series, five or six issues, um, mm-hmm. really good storyline. He's he's a really underrated writer. He has a lot on his mind. He has a lot to talk about. It's always a good uh, read anytime you read an Adam Warren book, uh, and that's no exception. I highly recommend that. And if and if they ever bring the series back, I told them, let me do the covers, please. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, well, actually, Pete, what is your next book? Oh, all right. Oh, well, yeah. Let's I'm keep gonna... this moving. So, uh, my next pick, uh, one of my other favorites, uh, artist-wise, is uh, Adam Hughes. So, I don't have the uh, regular, uh, I think it's a 1 in 25 variant of this cover, but I found the German edition. So, I have the German edition of Harley Quinn. Ooh, awesome. And this one's different because she doesn't have the little shorty shorts in this image. Mm. This is she's just wearing the straight jacket. So, it's oh. slightly different than the uh, copy you might find on that 1 in 25 variant. But... Gorgeous. I dig it. Plus, I get to put a foreign book in here. I mean, how often do you get to use a foreign book? <laughs> there you go. If you give me a second, I will show you a Adam Hughes thing that's worth talking about. Hold on. One oh, moment. absolutely. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. But yeah, that no, that book is hard to find. It's a, what, a couple hundred dollar book? Easy? The regular one. This one's not regular. Okay, so... Yeah. 
This right here is my my personal Adam Hughes cover collection, volume four. <laughs> and so I adore Adam Hughes. He's one of my favorites. And when I was a young artist, uh, you know, learning how to do this, I was studying him very intensely. And so what this is, is you couldn't buy art books of him Ooh. at the time, right? So this oh, is literally every he... cover I could get my hands on in chronological order. Yeah, they're detached from the comics, but I'm not buying the comics for value. I'm buying them for my love of Jeez. the art. So wow. to me, to me, this thing is, uh, you know, this is worth oh, you, to me. You tore up the cat oh. You tore up the lost one, the one that's like. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It hurts collectors. I'm sorry to do that to you guys, but it's. I, it, I'm trying to. It doesn't matter. How, how I love that you love did that for yeah. these arts. I, I'm all for what you did. <laughs> no. I have a copy of that just for the cover. I have no idea what's in the pages of that exact book. I just love the cover. So who cares? It's yeah. yours. Do what you and want. For, and for a, a segue, too, like the articles that the three of us write for the site are pretty much the three non spec articles like uh, Pete does the dollar bin digging one I do the cover appreciation one and Chris does the here's what I found in the random bin one um, <laughs> and and there and it's because the three of us really just love art and I don't care what the book is worth and that makes me love the fact that you mangled those books just oh, because yeah. you love the covers and you know you could care less about what those books are worth I think that's fantastic I love well, it but I also love the fact that you organized them that yeah, you, me too. Chrono <laughs> chronological order. I'm like, oh, you're a true fan. Now, my question is: In Volume One, do you have the Legionnaires and the Marvel Marvel Classic X Men and uh, those covers as well? Okay, see that then you're a true fan. I appreciate the uh, <laughs> yep. Penthouse Comics. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the your sound is a little warped here, Mike. Uh, the, your sound is a little warbly for me, but I think I heard you. And uh, yeah, I, I, for when I was when I was younger and I had less work to do, I uh, I would you know hunt these down and I, I got a pretty good collection going. And I, you know, part part of it too is like a lot of times you know the interiors really you know it was, didn't really do anything for me, and uh, the covers were everything. So I guess that that's what sort of inspired me in the first place to to put those books together. Uh, I've got another set for J. Scott Campbell and some other guys over here too, but I don't I don't have time to do this anymore. I still buy all the books, and and I keep thinking to myself, oh, someday I'll cut them out and I'll update my my uh, my folders. But uh, I think maybe time has run out for that. <laughs> but I'm sure glad to have the collections I do. So do you want us to start one for you, like of all the pinup covers, the Zenoscopes, the one for five hundreds or two hundreds, and just go? Uh, that, that's going to be man. Yours that's are going to be, be hard. difficult. <laughs> I, uh, I lost a couple of those words, but do, are you saying, do I have copies no, of all my... No, should we have one for books? you? I'll start one for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it, because of the way that they're marketed, it would be really hard to put together like a full DNA set, I think, at this point. Some of them are so rare. Um, mm. And so, so often they put me they put me on ratio variants. I mean, like, if someone... I, I kind of feel like someday someone's going to come to me at a show and, and show me that collection. And it's going to blow my freaking mind because it is not easy to put, even, even if when people get just one of them, like someone posted on Instagram today that they finally, after years of looking, maybe it was you, uh, finally after years of looking, got the uh, Apocalypse and the Extracts number one. And I know that's hard. So just that one book yeah. alone is, uh, is sort of yeah. a get. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially because like the the abstract or extracts one or whatever, it was not a well ordered book. So you have the one for it's not like you have the one for twenty five. You're the one for fifty guy. Yeah, so like it's even harder to find your covers, which is frustrating because like like the tar tar tarot one we talked about and yeah. the extract one, they're just like they're the ones people want. But d does anyone want actually? I mean, I tried reading tarot. I didn't. The interior was not my favorite, so I didn't read. But maybe one issue of it. So. Mm -hmm. But all right, Mike, what's your what's yeah, your third book here? Your second book. Oh, sorry, David, go ahead. Please go ahead. Um, my second book is actually my sort of the, the guy I always go back to. Um, one of my favorite guys in comics. He's so nice. He's done me a couple of commission favors in the past and I love his style. Um, and he's such a holdover and has been working for decades now. And I continually love his work. And that's Joseph Michael Lindsner. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, this particular one, 
uh, is one of, you know, one of the virgin ones that he, and I met him. He, so he signed it um, for the Betty page run that he did for a while. This is just one that, that I happen to like the most. I'm a butts guy. So <laughs> I mean, there's no other way. There's no other way to put it really, I guess. Um, but I feel like he just doesn't yeah. get enough love these days uh, that kind of like what he used to get with his Dawn series and stuff like that. But he continues to churn out gorgeous covers. Um, he's still doing the uh, Red Sonia A covers right now. Um, and he does a couple of other random things. But um, but this was this is my favorite of his that is re- relatively modern. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I could have chosen pretty much anything. Everything of his looks very pinup e. Um, especially when they're the Virgin covers. I think they're, um, his style is particularly um, perfect for that, for the Virginized covers rather than trade dress stuff. But I mean, I mean, either way, I just love his work. Um, he's, a, he's a super nice guy. If you've ever met him, I'm sure you've met him. Um, but anyone listening, you should do yourselves a favor, walk up to his table next time there is such a thing as a con uh, and a table. <laughs> where there's real people um, do yourself a favor and go talk to him. He's, he's so nice and so gracious with his time. Um, I just love to watch him work. He's, he does great work. Absolutely. Totally agree. So for my second book, uh, once again, I'm not going the route that everyone else goes. <laughs> uh, I wish I actually, I was planning on, I just don't have, um, there's a, one of the famous uh, famous books for a pinup that it makes the book worth so much more if you have it is uh was it Batman 151 uh, Poison Ivy uh, 180 the other 181 181 181, 181. <laughs> sorry 181 I have the book but it's missing the centerfold uh, so I'm I'm trusting Pete to throw that up to sh- show the centerfold that goes in there um, but it, it's it makes the book worth so much more I'm so, I, I got a great price on the book so I'm happy to have the first Poison Ivy cover. But to show, show what I'm talking about, I have this book. Uh, this is CP. You thought you'd be the only modern uh, foreign. Uh, this book is, I mean, foreign books are great because they have just, they have several things in them. So this is uh, 301, but in the middle of it, this one has a poster. So back in the day, you know, you get these. So check out the poster that's inside of this thing. Oh, Sinkevich. But it's wow. a, it's a gorgeous, like, I want to, I almost want to tear it up and hang it up on my wall, but it's, it's just such a great this, this little run of books that he did was great, but it's just a, in the middle is the middle of these books. I mean, a lot of the foreign books did this. I mean, I used to love getting inter, the entertainment magazines that would have the movie poster on the inside. When I think of pinups, mm-hmm. that's what I was thinking of, of not necessarily covers, but you open up the inside of the book and you take out the middle page, the centerfold, and it, it goes on your wall. Um, right, gotcha. And like, of course, now, now looking back, I'm like, I destroyed the value of whatever that book was because I did that. But back then, I just wanted to have the art hanging on my wall, yeah, um, sure. and and they sort of went away from that. Um, and it's I, it was actually hard trying to do research into it. And my final book, I'll talk about the research or whatever. But uh, I well, I, I'm going to sort of say now the the Silver Age. I guess Stan Lee commissioned a bunch of art to be done um, that was he called it pinups, and so he would throw these it covers, and you flip through, and then uh, now they're using them as a one for 100 hidden gem covers or whatever. A lot of them I've done. They had a Thor one. They're on t-shirts now and everything. Kirby and a bunch of them. Uh, I have an example here and whether this is my third book, I'm just showing it because it's where I brought it up uh, right in the middle of the book. You have a pinup uh, and it actually says pinup on the thing. Uh, so, right. It's, so that's when I thought of pinup, that's what I was thinking of, but these are, it's hard because I, I don't buy good copies of books that mine are all beat to hell. So the pinup is always missing in the book that I have. So like I tried to find there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful one of a uh, Kang. It's in Avengers 11, I think. Uh, it's a Spider-Man cover. He's on the web, but Kang the Conqueror is in it. And it's a beautiful pinup. I have the book. I have two copies of it, and both of them are missing that pinup. I never opened the book to find out because I just like the outside cover. Um, it's it's funny. A lot of your silver age. Because if I was a kid, I would have taken that out and hung it up on my wall. Daredevil Seven. Daredevil Seven has a Namor pinup in it, and I have had two copies of that damn book. I've got a whole run of Daredevil, and I cannot find Daredevil Seven with the Namor pinup in it. <laughs> Drives me crazy. I, I didn't realize how hard some of the, those are out of. And this one's freaking centerfold. Like it's a, it's the center of the book, but the next page, if it was if it's gone, the story's on the other side. So like, it, 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 if you choose to take it out, you're choosing screw the book. I don't care at all. Like it used to be, it was yours. 
That's the thing. Like, I know secondary value, like everybody's worried about value, but if you're never gonna sell it, who cares how much yeah. it's worth? It's yours. Do with it what you want. <laughs> No. I, I, I go back and forth. Like uh, with the Adam Hughes stuff, there there have definitely been times where, you know, the whole book is Adam Hughes, right? I don't yeah. want to tear it up. So uh, then I'll buy another mm. copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Some of his, and he evidently wrote a little bit too. So like some of his books, yeah. early books where he did the interiors, like, oh, these are great. Um, so yeah, he, his career is so interesting. He has, you know, there, there are times when he, he was a writer for himself and then for other people and he just mm -hmm. did the covers mm -hmm. and, He's trying everything, uh, but so, to me, like yeah, because of that, like the one of the high water marks is uh, Gen Thirteen Ordinary Heroes, which was a two issue yeah. deal he did at Wildstorm, where he mm. did everything. He, he wrote mm. it, he drew it beautifully. There's covers. I mean, like, I mean, what's yeah. better? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, I got I might I might have one. The Gen Thirteen that uh, Campbell did the covers and he wrote. Uh, the, uh, the, the Gen Thirteen Superman, where they they crisscross the cross world. Uh -huh. uh, he did he write Campbell, that, but he, he did write he it, did and then like Campbell did the covers it. of the. Hmm? Yeah. Sorry, what'd you say? Yeah, he didn't draw hardly anything for that book, but uh, it, it was well written. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, but just the fact that Campbell did the cover, I'm like, you get your two favorite people in the same well, book, please. Campbell did one set of the covers. I think Lee Ber Bermejo did another set of the yeah. covers on that that yeah. run. That's right. Yeah. It's uh, it's not it's not too common where both of them are doing variants for the same book. Although recently it's happened a lot, like a lot of these DC specials. Those are two mm -hmm. guys that, for good reason, they go to a lot. So you know, mm -hmm. your Wonder Woman eighty four announcement, or yeah. just like a couple of weeks ago, Detective ten twenty seven. Of course, both have yeah. a, you know a Campbell and a Hughes cover. I mean, if I was art directing it, those are the first guys I would go to. So I, good job, DC. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Correctly for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they make it tough though, because then you got a Hughes, you got a Campbell, you got a Jock, you got a Vermejo, you got a Jim Lee. It's like I can't afford to buy all of these covers because you're charging nine ninety nine for them or something. And it's I, like, yeah, they're killing me. I bought three three Batman ten twenty sevens for that reason. So you got me, DC. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, let's, let's speaking of a cover that's probably going to kill us, Mike. How much? How much did you pay? Now, uh, let's show your cover that you just oh. been going crazy for. Well, here was mine, but now we'll go to Mike's, which we've been teasing all night. It better be good. Oh, it's good. I'm not giving it to you. Yet. I'm going to make you wait. Oh, come on. <laughs> there it is. Oh, so gorgeous. It is. It is good. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Yay! And I just bought the only copy there off there eBay. You know, suckers. <laughs> Covers, yes. <laughs> this was uh Grimm's Fairy Tales 122, the Motor City this, Comic this Con. A bit of sound, but uh, yes, yes, because you can you can tell because of the uh, I won't forget I wouldn't forget that it was a Motor City because of the uh, the Detroit Lions look like yeah. on her on her shirt there. Um, in fact, for some reason, like I've never been to Motor City Comic Con, I've always wanted to, but uh, I've done variants for Zenoscope at least three times for Motor City in particular. Uh, this was one of them, and then there was a like a uh, like an uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a, when someone is working on cars, a, a grease monkey kind of vibe for a different one that came after, yeah, it, and then I think the third one after that. But uh, for some reason, the Motor City ones are always are always very good for me. Mike, and you've been to Motor City like two or three times, haven't you? This I one have. in particular. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Can yeah. you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Sorry. I don't. Okay. There's some kind of delay on the system now, but uh, uh, if you can still hear me, the uh, this was me trying to be very uh, minimalistic, but also push that like rendered versus flat thing. Um, and I think it's something I'd like to come back to uh, relatively soon. I haven't done it in a while, but it's a really striking way of making a cover. And uh, you don't always have to kill yourself, you know, to make a great cover. This, this felt like one yeah. where, you know, uh, with just a lot of good planning, I didn't have to spend 20 hours on it and still get a good result. That's why this one's special to me. And that's ex and that's exactly why I loved it. It stuck out to me. Not that I don't love the rest of your work, but this particular cover, the moment I saw it, it was just striking, simple. It did exactly what I wanted a cover to do. Um, it's also it also happens to be from a, a con that I go to. My brother lives out in that area, so the, just the whole thing 
is perfect. The, the, the color, the, the, the sort of stark nature of it. Um, obviously it's gorgeous. Obviously it's sexy. Um, that sort of goes without saying, but the, the whole thing, it's a, in, in my opinion, this is a perfect pinup composition to me. And so I had to go buy one instantly. Yeah. It's gorgeous. That bold line and that wine blue. Thank you background. so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cool. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And I got it cheap. I think I got it way too cheap. It's only 500 copies uh -huh. of this thing. So thank you so much. <laughs> so seller on eBay, disregard <laughs> what I've said. Please send it. It's <laughs> awesome. I, I love when you do the the black, the solid colors. It just all right, Pete. You're you're up. What's your what's your last one? Okay, so for my last pick, uh, I know Mike and I have had our little race towards who can get all of uh, Dave Stevens covers, I guess, first. Uh, so I went with awesome. the, the DNA agents. Yes. I went with yes. this one because I thought about the Planet Comics. I, I mean, I actually I used Planet Comics before. I thought about Space Vixens, but this this one is just straight up pinup. So I wanted to go with this. So unless we had like an 80s only topic, this is being used right now because it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore that cover. It is one of only, I think, three that I have of him. And I sought it out just specifically because of everything you said. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's one of the greatest covers I think I've ever seen. Um, and I feel like when you look at that, you can see Adam Hughes, you know, uh, the inspiration yeah. for Adam Hughes coming online as well. Because there are exactly. definitely some of his covers, especially when he was painting, that are very much like that. And I'm, I think I, I'm 100% sure I've heard him say that Stevens is one of his heroes too. So yeah, this is a continuum, you know, uh, you know, Elgren influenced, Stevens influenced, Adams influenced, you know, many years later me. <laughs> so. yeah. And I think that's why I like your art too, because I see all the artists you say that you like, like those are the ones I love too. So that's why I like your works. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. I, and I, I think that's it. You know, like there's no such thing as like originality in that sense anymore. But what there is, is there's, you know, the, the unique combination that you have of all Still the different unique. ways to draw that are out there. Yeah, that in itself feels unique. You can always tell, you know, who such and such was looking at when they learned how to draw. There's no doubt. But that that new that new recipe and the new stew that gets created can become unique it's on its own. So when uh, when young artists ask me for advice, one of the things I often say is, don't be afraid to just outright copy your heroes uh, <laughs> because you will learn a lot in the process and you're not going to be a copy of that person at the end of the day anyway. You're, you yeah. automatically start to bring in other inspirations. So why not? Just go ahead, copy. <laughs> I like that. I, I've never... It reminds me of uh, the old... Uh, was it uh, Sean Connery movie, Fighting Forrester? Uh, the, the kid types on the typewriter and he tells him just to copy my work, just start typing. And then by the time you're done, it'll be your work. And it, 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 like, it, that, it's like one of my favorite scenes in that entire movie. It's one like, of my favorite <laughs> movies. Great choice. I love that movie. For whatever I'm an English teacher. So. <laughs> oh, awesome. So you're, you're an art teacher and you're an English teacher. <laughs> yep. Amazing. I don't. I'm, 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 my whole family's teachers. So I, I, uh, I respect the craft so much and, I always thought maybe someday, you know, after I'm done being an artist, I'd like to be a teacher. Uh, you're never going to be done being an artist. You're phenomenal. You're just going to keep, you'll be a Neil Adams and just keep going. Uh, please uh, keep, please don't stop making art. Yes. I Look, I very rarely get excited. I very rarely get that excited about a cover. I wasn't putting that on just because it's the show. I'm legitimately excited to have that book in the mail. I mean, I can't wait to get the damn thing. So thank you yeah you, you have to keep making me that that thank you so much i really appreciate you doing that and it reminds me like i have had this thought a few times in the last couple months like you know what was a great cover that one why am i not doing more like that it's been a while so this is a good reminder to uh play with that tool again absolutely all right mike finishes off here Okay, so I was going to go Stevens. Obviously, I had the DNA agents ready as well. And then I was going to say, oh, well, maybe I'll go with like a Halloween. Maybe I'll go with a Halloween one because I love this. But, but to kind of go, yeah, but to kind of go off the same sort of like hard line, but realistic sort of thing, I decided to kind of jump and, and go to this one instead, which yes. is, uh, which is a beautiful Hughes uh, in that same vein. 
Um, it seems like the, the one that everyone always likes is the one with her licking the blood off her finger, but I've always liked this one better for whatever reason. Um, it just, I think it's gorgeous. I think there's a sort of a, that early innocence on the face for Hughes. I, I just think this is a perfect cover. I've always loved this cover. I wish there was a little less trade dress going on down here, yeah. but, I, but for the most part, I think this is gorgeous. And again, of course it's another butt cover. Yeah. 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 You know, make, make your jokes, but, but still, I think this, this epitomizes that same, that same idea with the hard, the hard black lines. Um, but also the realistic painting style inside the lines. And I, I just, Absolutely. I guess I just yeah. love that style. And it's yeah. perfect. Me, me too. I'm, I'm so with you on that. I consider that a masterpiece. Um, Hughes has been good in all the eras of his career, but that sort of painted Van, Vampirella age, like, oh my God, they're, they're one after another. And yep. the other interesting thing about that is they're, they are unabashedly sexy. Like he is just trying to make a true pinup cover in the truest sense you know, yep. the, coming right out of the Gil Elfgren and Dave Stevens tradition. And you yep. just don't see that that much anymore. And it's, yeah. it's, it's strange because I've thought about this a lot because I, I work in this space, obviously. And over in Japan, they make a distinction between comics for boys and comics for girls. It's called shoujo and shonen, right? But here in America, we have comics that are sort of like, uh, you know, it's it's supposed to be you know, for everybody all at once. And that's that's really hard, like to make a comic that appeals to every single segment of the audience all at once. You have mm -hmm. you you often have to compromise something to make that true. So I, I've always wondered what it would be like if if America had a shonen shoujo approach to comics. And if they did, you would see things like Adam Hughes Vampirella pinup covers a lot more often. Because that stuff flies just fine in Japan. But here we have uh, a little bit of a puritanical streak where it's a little a little iffy and a little dicey for people. Now, that being said, I'm totally not into X-rated, like the boobs are hanging out types covers. That's, oh. That seems a little uh, tacky to me. Um, yeah. I'll never I'll never draw that stuff. But like the the sort of tasteful and um, another thing I try to do is like uh, I, I, I kind of want the women to look empowered. You know, in, in in a lot of the cases, I don't want them to look like uh, they're not having fun, like they're like, you know, that, that kind of stuff is sort of uh, tacky to me, too. So, you know, to me, that's the line. Like, that's where it's sexy. And if you go over it, then it's not sexy and it's tawdry. So uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to see more comics like that. It's sort of my taste uh, sometimes. It's, you know, I, I don't get me wrong. I love the mainstream stuff just as much. But. Uh, I do miss a Adam Hughes Vampirella pinup cover these days. You don't just get, you just don't get a lot of that anymore. Yeah. But no, I, I'm with you. I'm definitely with you on this. Cause I know you've done a Patriotica cover, which I do like that cover that you did, but some of the other covers, which are basically just Thanks. homages to like Hughes, but they just add nipples to them that I'm not a fan of. Yeah. That I feel no, is that's, not that it, past that line. I, but I, I'm totally with you. Right. And then I, Totally agree with you. I've had that same thought. And I also feel like, what does Adam think? You know, like you're, exactly. what if he, he may not approve of that? I, I, I feel anytime I do an homage and I try to keep it pretty limited, but anytime I do an homage, I'm thinking really, really hard about, you know, the original and the artist and their intent and uh, trying to like uh, make something that they can, you know, hopefully be proud of ideally, you know, like, yay, my thing was so cool and inspired other people a generation mm -hmm. later to do it again, you know, like that, that's, that's cool. Like who wouldn't be flattered exactly. by that? But I never want to get to the point where it would make them upset, you know, you know? then especially if it's a hero like Adam or Jay Scott or one of these guys. So yeah. that, that's where I feel like they, maybe they shouldn't have done that. Well, it's speaking of homages and heroes and, there's one cover that we not quite sure if you're homaging, but we feel like you did a Lost Twenty uh, Legion of Superheroes twenty three homage for Hughes on Captain Marvel, uh, riding yes. the comet. Yep, uh, it, it it says on the cover uh, after Adam Hughes, even though it's not a one to one homage, but I'm acknowledging for sure like this this wonderful idea of a superheroine playfully riding an asteroid that is. 100% Adam Hughes' idea. Um, I, I, 
part of the reason, yeah, it's, it's so perfect. Um, part of the reason I changed the camera angle on it was because I didn't want to fully uh, rip him off for the same reasons I was, uh, you know, describing earlier. Um, I, I could imagine other ways to communicate the same idea. And I like the angle I, I came up with. But yeah, you can see on that cover, it says after Adam Hughes on it, yeah, because that, it's absolutely meant to be an homage. Yeah, I miss that after. Like you don't see that as much anymore. Like where you get the the artist actually recognized and saying, you know, you know, after Todd or after Jim or whoever they might be, uh, you know, homaging in their image. But that it's oh my perfect. gosh, it's classy you have to put that. I mean, like I, I think it's required. I think it's you know, it's definitely classy. It's the right thing to do. But if you don't do it, that looks so bad. It it looks like you're trying to claim credit for it when it wasn't yours. So I'm I'm totally against not putting the credit on there. Yeah. But wait, but the Patriotica cover, not yours, but the other ones, the uh, is Adam one hit out after Hughes, <laughs> after <laughs> Hughes, n nipples showing, but after Hughes, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 iffy. I wouldn't have done it, but, all right, yeah, nipples aside. Well, I'm getting the uh, the signal, I'm getting the signal that I need to get going, feed the family oh, yes. <laughs> over here, but yeah. uh. Just to wrap things up, uh, Peter, Mike, and Chris, thank you guys so, so much for having me thank on the show. Oh, thank I you. love talking thank you. about all things comics, and I can tell we're we're uh, we're all really like-minded about this stuff, so I could talk, talk another few hours, I'm sure, easily. <laughs> Maybe we can do it again soon. Yes. Thank also, you. that'd be great. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. All right. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks right. a lot. Bye-bye.